Hello, my name is Claire Bambrick and I teach tillage here in Kildalton. Today I'm going to talk to you about the management and agronomy of a crop of winter barley. So to begin, the soil in this field is classified as a brown earth soil, which is a medium soil type. This soil is ideal for growing winter barley as it is a well-drained, fertile soil which has good water retention in dry spells. Winter barley is susceptible to a soil-borne disease called take-all. So in order to reduce the risk of this disease, this crop of winter barley was grown after a crop of oats. Oats is a cereal break crop as it is not affected by take-all. The other crops that we grow in rotation on this block of land are winter oilseed rape, winter wheat and spring barley. Cover crops are sown on any fields before spring cropping. Crop rotations and cover cropping are two of the IPM or Integrated Pest Management strategies that we use here in the college to promote sustainability on our tillage enterprise. To establish this crop of winter barley, we began by ploughing the field. This is another IPM technique as ploughing helps to bury the trash from the previous crop. It also helps to aerate the soil and allows us to sow the crop into a fresh, clean seedbed. We sowed this crop on the 14th of October with a one-pass seed drill. A one-pass seed drill cultivates the soil and sows the seed in one operation. The aim is to have a fine, firm, level, uncompacted seedbed to ensure good establishment and to get the crop off to the best possible start. We were able to roll the crop a couple of days after sowing, as the soil conditions were good at the time. Rolling is very beneficial to ensure good seed to soil contact, it helps reduce the pest movement below the surface and also to reduce the crows attacking the crop. The variety of winter barley which was sown is KWS Infinity. We picked this variety from the Department of Agriculture winter barley recommended list. KWS Infinity is a two-row variety with a good yield potential. As you can see from the recommended list, it has short straw and good resistance to lodging. It has good resistance to net blotch and rhincosporium and a moderate resistance to brown rust. However, this variety is moderately susceptible to mildew. KWS Infinity does have a large grain size and good grain quality. Knowing the strengths and weaknesses of a variety is very important as it will influence your management decisions on the crop for the remainder of the season. Choosing a variety with good disease resistance properties is another important IPM technique. This crop was sown at a seeding rate of 216 kilograms to the hectare. This seeding rate was chosen based on the target plant population, the seed size and the expected establishment percentage. The formula to calculate the seed rate in kilograms to the hectare is target plant population multiplied by 1000 grain weight divided by percent establishment. In our case, the target plant population was 300 plants per meter squared, the 1000 grain weight was 54 grams and the percent establishment was 75%, giving us a seeding rate of 216 kilograms to the hectare. As you can see, the crop has established really well. After sowing the crop, the next input it received was a herbicide. The most common timing for chemical control of weeds in winter barley is by either using a pre-emergence or a post-emergence herbicide. This year, unfortunately, due to some broken weather following sowing, we weren't able to get out with a pre-emergence herbicide. So instead, we applied a post-emergence herbicide on the 1st of December, when weather and soil conditions were suitable. We applied a mixture of two herbicides to control annual weeds like groundsel, cleavers, red dead nettle and chickweed and grass weeds like annual meadow grass. As you can see, these sprays were very effective at killing the weeds and the crop can now grow without competition from weeds. We will spray Axial Pro or a similar product to control wild oats in this crop. We also applied an insecticide on the same date to control aphids. Aphids transmit a virus called barley yellow dwarf virus, or BYDV for short. 
BYDV causes the leaves to turn yellow and can cause stunting of plants in severe cases, which will reduce yield. We can reduce the risk of aphids by delaying our autumn sowing dates, but we should only use aphicides when necessary to reduce the risk of resistance building up to these chemicals. The next item I want to talk to you about is crop nutrition. The starting point for any fertiliser programme is testing the level of nutrients in the soil. A soil test for this field shows that it has a pH of 6.8 and is at index 3 for both phosphorus and potassium. Now, as you know, we can't test the amount of nitrogen with a soil test, but we do estimate the nitrogen index based on previous cropping history. As this field is in a tillage rotation and the previous crop was a cereal crop, the nitrogen index for this field is index 1. Since we sowed the field, the crop has tillered or thickened up well over the winter months. As you can see, each plant has one main stem and two to three tillers. The aim is to keep as many of these tillers alive as possible, as each tiller will produce an ear at harvest time. If we take a look at this crop, there's currently 1,200 shoots per meter squared. The first split of nitrogen was applied in early March with the aim of keeping the tillers alive and to ensure a high ear count at harvest time. As the crop is in index 3 for phosphorus and potassium, these nutrients are applied as a compound fertiliser with the first split of nitrogen. The crop will receive 38 kg of phosphorus to the hectare and 95 kg of potassium to the hectare to replace crop offtakes. If we apply 475 kilograms to the hectare of a compound like 12A20, we will meet 30% of the total nitrogen and all of the phosphorus and potassium requirements. The remaining 70% of nitrogen will be applied before growth stage 32, as this is the time when crop nitrogen uptake is at its maximum. This nitrogen will be applied as sulfacan, which will supply both nitrogen and sulfur to the crop. Up to 200 kilograms to the hectare of nitrogen will be applied to this crop due to its nitrogen index, its high yield potential, and from previous experience on the farm. Most crops of winter barley will receive either one or two plant growth regulators during the growing season, depending on the lodging risk. The first plant growth regulator will help to strengthen the stems, while the second plant growth regulator will help to reduce stem height which will reduce the risk of lodging. The first plant growth regulator could include Cycocell on its own, or we could add either Modus or Medus Max. This is usually applied at the start of stem extension around growth stage 31. The second application then could include products like Terpal or Serone, and these are usually applied from growth stage 32 to 39. Most crops of winter barley receive either two or three spray disease control programme. A three spray programme is necessary when disease levels are high in early spring or when susceptible varieties are sown. This crop is currently free from disease, but we will continue to monitor the crop for signs of disease, in particular mildew, because we know that this variety is moderately susceptible to the disease. The key target diseases on winter barley are net blotch, rhincosporium, mildew and rust. It is important to use a fungicide with two or more modes of action to reduce the likelihood of any resistance forming. It is likely that we will use a triazol and an SDHI mixture such as Siltra. The final fungicide then will be applied when the awns are emerging. The key target disease at this stage is Ramularia. Again, a fungicide with different modes of action will be applied as well as a multi-site fungicide to reduce the risk of resistance and to prevent the crop from Ramularia infection. This crop will be harvested from mid to late July when the moisture content of the grain is less than 20%. At this stage, the ears should be bent down and hard and the grains will be easily separated. We hope that this crop will yield at least 10 tonnes to the hectare. We don't have any grain storage facilities on the farm, so the crop will be sold directly to our local co-op. The straw then will be baled and used for bedding livestock on the enterprises on the college farm. Once the straw has been cleared, we will begin preparations for the next crop in the rotation, which in this case is winter oilseed rape. 
and we'll begin this and we'll sow it in late August. So in summary, in order to sustainably achieve a high yielding crop, we must sow our crops in good seedbeds, keep them free from any weeds or pests, apply appropriate amounts of fertiliser to the crop, keep the crop free from disease, and try to reduce the lodging risk. Thank you for your time and attention and best of luck with your future studies.